Servus, Männer, it's Red Pill Germany again. You probably all have heard the news. We have a new variant again, yes. With all their genetic screening, the globalist elites finally found a new variant of the China bug with which they can scare us. And it is also a tool, a vehicle to make more money, but not on the free market, of course. This is all government spending, so it is your tax money and my tax money that these big corporations get by our governments and we are not even asked about it. That is a money printing scheme of these big pharmaceutical corporations, you all know their names, right? And the governments of the Western world especially, they are pumping our taxpayers' money directly into the pockets of these dubious businessmen. All right, so in today's video, I want to present briefly what we know about this new variant, or as far as I can tell that from media sources at least, and then give you my take on this very very new situation no of course it's not new it's also not mu it's omicron and i will also tell you why it is called omicron but before we get into all of that i want to thank my supporters and my subscribers like share and subscribe and also check me out on alt tech platforms if you want to support my work you can do so via patreon or subscribestar Okay, first things first. So this Omicron variant is apparently a new mutation, a new variant that predominantly was found in South Africa or Southern Africa in some northern neighbor countries of South Africa also I have read. But it also has been found already in the Middle East, in Hong Kong, in Belgium and already in Germany also. So it has arrived in Europe already. Now what are the experts saying? What are the virologists saying? They are all or many of them are actually using the phrase that they are worried or it is worrisome and we have to uh, watch the situation. What that means, let me translate that into layman's words, that means that they don't know. They definitely don't know if this thing is more dangerous and they don't even know if it is more infectious. Because we know the reasoning from Delta, they said, oh, it is displacing Alpha in the population, so that means it's more infectious. But does that really mean that in this case? Because in South Africa, the numbers and the infection rate was very, very low at this time of the year. So if a new variant spreads, then it's not necessarily because it is outcompeting the old variant due to a higher infectiousness or a higher infection rate, but it just means that it was created there maybe or it's found its way there and under the conditions there, it is able to spread. It doesn't mean any more or any less. We technically don't even know if this thing is more infectious. And based on the reports that I read from South Africa or that were quoted at least in the German media, uh, the doctors from down there, they say that they have mild symptoms and no hospitalizations or not a lot at least. They say that uh, the symptoms are a little strange, that uh, it's not so much coughing but more fatigue or being tired. But we always have to consider that Africa or South Africa, that is a different culture, a different country. They have a more life-affirming culture. They're not our European culture of death that dances around an altar to the death god. So that means they have a lot of children and they have very young people. The average age there is much lower. So that means they don't worry about this thing whatsoever. They haven't worried about it so far at least. And it is mostly the Europeans who wet their pants about this thing. So that is why our dear experts say that they are worried. That doesn't mean that they know anything that makes them worried. It means they don't know anything, but they want to watch the situation. That's what that means. And by the way, we don't know how long this thing has been to South Africa already and we don't see a huge spike in cases or in mortality or something like that. So from the data we have we cannot uh, conclude that this is very dangerous or more dangerous. What is interesting so far is, I think, however, that the genetic changes of this mutation with respect to previous versions, Delta or Alpha, are significant, the researchers say. 
they say that it has mutated, genetically speaking, far from the previous versions and especially that spike protein that, you might remember that, is so to speak the key or the tool that the virus uses to gain access to our cells. This spike protein looks different in the Omicron variant. It has mutated, it is different in its structure. So this is all speculation, but that could mean that it could enter more efficiently into cells or some cells, or maybe it enters into other cells. Um, I read, for example, that Delta predominantly uh, attacked fat cells. So maybe the primary target of Omicron is a different cell in the human body than predominantly. But this is all speculation, of course. One has to bear in mind, however, that, uh, how should I say now, um, this uh, pharmaceutical product that provides, according to the manufacturers, for a certain specific small time window after the jab it provides a modification of the symptoms and they claim it um, improves or it lessens those severe symptoms in some cases maybe i think those were the words yeah bear in mind that these products are tailored or that's what they claim at least tailored to that spike protein so that our bodies would produce antibodies to that spike protein. Now, if that spike protein looks different now in that new variant, then that could potentially pose a problem for this pharmaceutical product and the desired effect according to the manufacturer. And what is the answer of our politicians and of the companies involved? Yes, uh, we should just give this out to more people, of course. But is that really a problem for them? No, that is actually their game plan. That is their business model. That is their strategy. Because they said that they are already analyzing the genome and they already do experiments and they're already working on new substances that are then addressing this new variant. And of course, they use taxpayers' money for all of that and their profit will be from taxpayers' money and the governments are enforcing that. So it is just like with the flu, it is a virus that mutates fast where you have different variants and you don't know what will hit you. Like imagine that you want to prepare in autumn for the winter, so you want to have your jab, but then um, the doctors or the industry, they must decide what they expect will be the dominant variant in the coming season. And it's impossible to know in many cases. And that was always the problem with the flu shot. And that is why normally people don't even bother. And it could get the same here. Just now the situation is different. Now the government and the politicians, they don't leave that decision to you anymore. You know, with the flu, we always had a personal choice. Do we do it or do we not do it? But now the government governments want to make that decision for us and that pumps our money directly into the pockets of these pharmaceutical corporations. And for them that is of course jackpot. You know now you have a new scare scenario, a new adversary that mutates all the time and where they always need to develop a new drug and a new product that gives people immunity and lessens the symptoms and this probability goes down etc etc and every year it's a new one and you don't know what will come but this time the government just says well we give you taxpayers money you do that that's important and nobody cares in the end if it really helps anybody or if we just changed our point of view i hinted at that a couple of times before and maybe i will um, put my thoughts into proper words in an upcoming video but I think nothing really changed over the last decades or, or cent centuries even but we just and by we I mean this old European culture um, these old people these uh, mostly yeah, um, inner city uh, liberals maybe they changed their perspective on life on natural life so what used to be normal like what happens in the winter in Europe for example a seasonal effect so to speak that is no longer seen as normal but as something that needs to be avoided at all costs no matter the collateral damage they cause in the process. 
And now in the end, I want to say something about this Greek name, Omicron. It is the letter uh, Omicron in the Greek alphabet, of course. So the variants are labeled with these um, Greek letters always. And there is a Greek alphabet. And I think the last variant must have been Mu. And it's not very important. So we didn't hear about it. I think Lambda I heard once. And, and, and there was Beta and Alpha and Delta and so on. But, you know, in the Greek alphabet, after Mu, there would be the letter Nu, which is the N. But um, then they said, oh, um, we didn't want to use that letter because in English it sounds like the word new, like novel or something. Like it's not a new thing, which technically it is, but, you know, they didn't want to call it the new variant, okay? Because every variant is kind of new. So that's ridiculous. And I understand that. But then, you know, the next letter is not Omicron. It is Xi, as we pronounce it in German. I don't know how to pronounce it in English. Xi. Yeah? And um, that is spelled X-I. Uh, yeah. So um, and uh, then, you know, why did the WHO not call it uh, G, uh, uh, Xi, of, not G, of course, uh, Xi, of course, yeah? And and then they said, ah, we we didn't want to stigmatize people, especially in some Asian countries, you know? Well, so this is not a um, tinfoil hat theory or something like that. No, the WHO officially stated that they didn't want to use Xi as a name for this variant because of a certain Chinese person. Of course, they said Chinese people in general or certain people, but we all know what that means. They are afraid of the person who bought the, uh, who donates a lot of money to this noble cause. So the WHO is basically in the pocket of the Chinese Communist Party for all of you guys who haven't gotten the memo yet. Now I think it is pretty clear, but after two years of this theater, um, I think we should all um, be in the know for a long time already. So to sum up, the experts don't know a lot. They just know that it has mutated substantially. The spike protein looks different and that could have potentially some effects but so far we do not see uh, more severe cases. We technically don't even know if it is more infectious. And because they don't know, they say that they are worried. Because what else would they be these days? Being worried is apparently the only thing that's allowed nowadays. Let me know in the comments down below what you think about that. And as always, Servus Kameraden!